Before we get started, I have a, an announcement. I love an announcement. So I've been wanting to do listener letters, like a Dear Abby-ish type. And we received our first letter. So after this segment, listen, uh, wait to the very end. Or if you're a reader, look. If you're a podcast listener, listen. <laughs> if you're a YouTube watcher, watch. Um, at the very end, we're going to do our first listener letter. So I'm really excited. So see you then. Stick around afterwards. And don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. Bye. Just kidding. Okay, first off, we're going to talk about the new denim. And it's called the new denim for a reason. Denim styles are changing. There have been a major shift in the way that denim looks. And I'd be lying if I said I was not a little nervous about it. I've been over skinny jeans for a while now. Uh, you know, kind of like, ooh, skinny jeans. But that doesn't mean I've found anything to replace them. So denim looks very different than it has in the past. And finding a replacement may be a little bit more challenging than it seems. Covering the new styles of denim is a whole segment on its own. So I'm going to keep it brief just for now. Just pay attention in the up and coming months of the significant changes that denim is taking on for 2022. And those styles are going to be wide leg, high rise, thank God, they're not going away, high rise, low rise are coming back, yes, you heard me right, straight leg, boyfriend, utilitarian, and baggy, and when I say baggy, baggy, dragging the floor, baggy. Okay, moving on, next we're going to talk about leather from head to toe, leather, leather, and vegan leather, one of the biggest 2022 fashion trends is leather. Now, it's nothing new for leather pieces to emerge during the fall because of the cooler weather, obviously. And typically, we see jackets, a few skirts, and pants. But this year, leather is taking a new form, and that form is called anything and everything. It's leather head to toe. Leather, leather, and more vegan leather. Hats, skirts, jackets, corset cops, and dresses. Corset cops, really. Corset tops and dresses. Every line has a leather, or I call it a leather piece. So imagine this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You're at the gap, you're shopping for some jeans, and the next thing you know, you're in the dressing room with a pair of straight leg vegan leather pants and a leather jacket. I know this happens, but I said the gap, not a high fashion boutique. My point is, leather is so popular, it's infiltrating the stores that supply us with our everyday staples. With all the leather floating about, I think it's kind of important we talk about vegan leather. Now, I'm not really proud of this, but I haven't really been an advocate for leather in the past because I assumed that if leather goods were so prevalent in the market as a consumer, I really wasn't doing anything wrong by possessing them. Well, with the growing popularity of leather, I just did a little research and I've had a major change in attitude. So now I see vegan le leather as a really innovative attempt to lessen the cruelty and unnecessary slaughter of animals for leather goods. And it doesn't really matter what my stance is. I can't fathom disagreeing with the previous statement and I would not be caught dead protesting for the opposition. So just to pass it on, here are a few facts about vegan leather that are fascinating to me. Vegan leather is often made from polyurethane, and it's a polymer that can be made to order for a designer's whim, which is cool. So basically, we've got these sustainable, innovative materials that are not hurting animals, and they can use them for whatever they want. So we have a wide variety of you know feels and everything. Now, PETA goes on to say, not only does vegan leather make you look good, it also makes you feel good because it's cruelty-free. More than a billion with a B, cows, pigs, goats, sheep, alligators, ostriches, kangaroos, and even our dogs and cats, our dogs and cats, are cruelly slaughtered for their skins every year. The tails and horns of these animals are cut off without painkillers, and some are even skinned and cut apart while they're still conscious. So by contrast, vegan leather offers a killer look without any killing. That was enough for me. No one had to twist my arm to get me on board. I'm pretty much sold. So here's to vegan leather minus the cruelty. Next up, we've got flowing maxi dresses and skirts. Okay, this is one of my favorites. My best friend was the first person to introduce me 
to the YSL 2022 fashion show, and it has been burned in my brain ever since. I've watched it a hundred times, and I get the chills every time I see it. The music, the Eiffel Tower glittering, glowing. Oh gosh, I could go on and on about how many things I love about this show, and oh, what they did right. But I'll keep it relevant and short. When I think of high fashion, YSL did it right. The silhouettes of flowing maxi dresses and those tailored jackets are forever just made a mark in my brain. I've been waiting for the time to come because I knew that silhouette would hit, hit you know, the mass population at some point in time and it finally has um this is their time i believe um it's this fall so it's time for us to shine in our elegant maxi dresses and i'll let the runway speak for itself if you have not seen it youtube it the ysl winter 2022 show or on my blog there's a link please do it now basics with status the white tank top got a status boost when one little designer sent their seven foot beauties down the runway in not so basic basics. The models filed on the stage wearing white tank tops with the familiar triangle logo, you know who I'm talking about? Instantly transforming a basic into an it piece. These once called basics are now must have pieces in 2022. Inspired by Prada, you guessed it, the row, Bottega Veneta, and more. Your average staples now play a significant role in much more elegant looks. So basically, basics are just the deal right now. White tanks with jeans, blazers, white tanks, my white tanks and more white tanks. The basics, baby. Okay, I really feel like I just dialed that last one in. I mean, just barely even awake. It was so easy. But this one will be a little bit more challenging. But just as easy for us to wear them. Okay, bomber jackets. Bomber jackets, bomber jackets. What is a bomber jacket? Let's talk about this. According to dapperconfidential.com, and don't you know, they know what they're talking about. A bomber jacket by design is a shorter waist hitting silhouette. And that is what defines a bomber jacket. So ending with a knit or a gathered waistband. This key attri attribute is joined by a zip front, two to four pockets, knit cuffs and a fold down or knit collar sitting flush with the shoulders so that doesn't mean that just like varsity style bomber jackets um, are the only ones in existence there are a lot more styles you can really you know play off those those key elements and you can have yourself a lot of different styles okay so have you ever felt like your look was just stale and needed a, a new style like a new something well, that's the bomber jacket for me because bomber jackets are a totally fresh style to me. I mean, I've literally owned one or maybe two my entire dressing career. Bomber jackets, let me say that one more time. Bomber jackets, bomber jackets, sorry, are a style I don't wear that often. Where have I been, you ask? Well, let me see. Uh, I have no clue. Um, it's just also crazy because Considering a baseball tee was my version of dressing really vintage and cool for so many years, I'm shocked that I don't really have that style of jacket. So it's new turf. Uh, as I'm getting to know this um, little bomber jacket in 2022, I'm liking these more and more on how they are very versatile. They're a good example of that. And they teeter between ultra casual and even dressy, depending on their fabric and hardware. When constructed of corduroy, you know, a more casual material. They're great with joggers, denims, and tees. On the other hand, think about this. Light silks or fur, hello, can elevate a bomber to a dressy, elegant status. I like that a lot. So go find your bomber jacket. What's up next? It's the sheer clothing. Okay, shears. All you need to do is take a quick look at the sheer pieces I chose for this section and you will realize why this look is one of my favorite of 2022. Sheer apparel is elegant, feminine, and so very sexy on a sophisticated level. 
some pieces of clothing whisper, I'm here. Whereas sheer garments ring a freaking five alarm siren giving any passerby a small little glimpse, a wisp, a peek at everything that they will miss. Now there's an appropriate time and a place for sheer garments and when you wear them, but when you choose to, everyone will notice. This is normally where we would say goodbye. If you like this show, lucky you. We have the debut of our newest segment that has no name yet. We solve listener dilemmas. Here we go. This episode is called Twisted in Tulsa. Oh, here's the letter. I'm so excited. Dear Madison Vidi. That's me. Vidi. Dear Madison Vidi. I am a 28-year-old woman. I'm a college graduate, and I have a very good job. I've got a very good head on my shoulders. My boyfriend does too. We are supposed to get married, and he would be your fiance technically, but let's not confuse things. We're supposed to get married next summer. He's perfect in every way. I can't wait for the butt on this one. He's perfect, perfect for every way. My parents love him. My friends love him. He loves my parents. Our families get along. It's great except for there's one boo-boo. He's very controlling, not in a mean way, but he's got access to anything and everything of mine. But I have access to nothing of his. For instance, I can't get in his phone, and the other night we got into a huge fight, and I said, I want to see your what's in your phone, and he told me no, and he refused to. Should I just accept that and let him let him be a doormat? Or should I put my foot down and threaten to leave if, if I'm not able to have access to his phone? Twisted in Tulsa. Well, Twisted in Tulsa, I'm twisted for you. I feel sick for you, actually. Because by not letting you into his phone, he is absolutely showing you proof that there is something on there. So get over that, sweetheart, first, because that's a fact. Second off, now, do you want to live the rest of your life like this or do you want to put down your grounds? Well, I'm gonna tell you the hardest thing to do, but the most effective thing to do and why you should do it. You should lay down the law. Not even talk about any incident, any, any instance that are on his phone now, but you should say, here's the deal. This is what I expect from you. I will never go through your phone, but if there's a chance that I want to, we should be good enough to each other that we won't see something that will hurt us if I need to borrow your phone for five minutes. It's a respect thing. And I know you're probably thinking, don't take the gamble. What if he says, you know, too bad, then leave. I'm not letting you do that. Well, then he's not worth it and you're not right for him because that's bullshit. Bullshit. And you will thank him later. You will thank God later for letting you dodge that bullet if he says no. So that's what you're going to do, Twisted in Tulsa. You write back. Let us know how it goes. Be strong, girl.